Hello everyone, my name is Jeb Wallace and I'm a staff technologist here at Cohesity. I'm going to show you how you can use the new Zscaler DLP integration with Cohesity. But why is this important? In any enterprise environment, data exfiltration is becoming a major threat. Ransomware attacks go beyond encrypting data and denying user access, leaking sensitive data through exfiltration tactics. Data loss prevention, or DLP, is crucial as it helps prevent sensitive and government regulated data, such as personally identifiable information from getting leaked, whether the leak is intentional, like with double extortion ransomware or unintentional. Using your backup data on Cohesity in conjunction with your data loss prevention strategy helps prevent data exfiltration. With this new integration, Cohesity classifies backup data based on sensitivity and shares intelligence with Zscaler. Zscaler uses this information to fingerprint and index that data, monitor outbound traffic, and enforce your organization's DLP policies, which may entail blocking potential exfiltration events and notifying your organization's auditor when an event triggers a DLP policy. The integration between Cohesity DataHawk and Zscaler Data Protection provides comprehensive coverage, allowing you to reduce your risk to your sensitive data across on-prem and edge. The integration helps prevent data breaches improve compliance, and gather valuable intelligence from your backup data to enhance your security posture. Now let's dive into the demonstration of Zscaler integration with Cohesity to prevent sensitive data exfiltration. Before integrating Zscaler with Cohesity, there are some prerequisites prior to setup. One, download and configure the virtual machine image from the Zscaler index tool with VMware. Two, Create a document server that can be a Linux or Windows virtual machine on your VMware vCenter. Three, create a scheduled index document match IDM template and configure the document server details in the IDM template. And four, define the DLP dictionary and DLP engine. Detailed instructions can be found in the Zscaler and Cohesity deployment guide on Zscaler's website under Zscaler Technology Partners then data. Now let's head over to DataHawk Security Dashboard by clicking on Security and then Security Center. It's important to point out that critical workloads backed up by Cohesity Data Protect are scanned using DataHawk's highly accurate ML-based engine to classify sensitive data, including personally identifiable information, PII, using industry-specific classifiers such as PCI and HIPAA. Classifications can be used on demand to understand sensitive data proliferation or is invoked on anomalies for sensitive data impact analysis. With that said, let's go ahead and click on integrations. Then we're gonna click on browse integrations. And here you can see a list of available integrations. We wanna select Zscaler data protection. But since our integration is already configured, let's take a look at the existing settings. Now I'm gonna go back and click on My Integrations. And then I'm gonna click on Zscaler. In the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there are three vertical dots. If we click on them, we have options to edit, pause, and delete the integration, as well as view support documentation. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Edit. Within the Zscaler configuration, first is the document servers we wanna store the sensitive files detected by data classification scans. Second is the Cohesity cluster we wanna use. Next, under file submissions, we can select the submissions and pattern filters we wanna to use to filter the sensitive files to store on the document server. And lastly, under submission status, here we enable file submission to store the sensitive files discovered in the data classification scans on the document server. After integration configure is complete, we're gonna go ahead and click Cancel. Once the integration with Zscaler is complete, we can easily view the status of sensitive files submitted on the document server by clicking on the Zscaler and looking at the activity page. Also, we can click on the activity and view the details of the sensitive files submitted to the document server. So if I click on the file submitted here, we can see this information includes scanned objects, source, the system, the document server, the document server VM, the file path, 
and the source, and of course the file submission with the number of files submitted. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and click close. Now let's run a quick DLP test by trying to exfiltrate one of the classification files. So let's go ahead and click on File Explorer, then drag the file in question over to the DLP test page, and let's see what happens. So as we can see, the file was blocked by the Zscaler policy, preventing exfiltration of the data. Now let's head over to the Zscaler Internet Access Console. If we head over to the navigation on the left, we see Analytics, which has several reports and insight logs available to us. I want to click on Web Insights. Web Insights provides real-time log consolidation across the globe, so you can view every transaction performed by your users regardless of where they are in the world, and also filter logs based on the selected Cohesity DLP engine that blocks the transfer of sensitive data based on the DataHawk data classification capabilities. To do this, we need to select logs and then choose a time frame for which to filter the logs. Let's select previous month. Next, I need to add a filter and I'm gonna use the DLP engine. And then I'm gonna select the Cohesity engine. I'm gonna add a second filter and I'm gonna type policy and then I want to select policy action. And under policy action, we want to select blocked. And once we select block, I want to go ahead and apply these filters. With the log filters applied, Zia lists all the logs matching the selected criteria. If one or more violations are detected, it displays several types of information related to the violation, such as user, policy action, URL, URL category, and cloud application. In addition to user policy action, URL category, and cloud application, Zscaler also lists the DLP engine name and the DLP dictionary that triggered the policy action. Lastly, let's take a look at the Zscaler data discovery report, which offers a detailed view of potential DLP violations via its data discovery report page. I want to go ahead and click on analytics and then scroll down to data discovery report, and we'll go ahead and click on here. We need to apply a few filters first to get it some information populated. First, I'm gonna go ahead and click the content type and we wanna select DLP engines. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and click last 90 days. And here we can see it gives you a high level visibility and insight into your organization's data loss prevention, DLP content, allowing you to monitor and analyze DLP data in a single location. The report provides not only information based on your organization's DLP policies and dictionaries, but also on machine learning data based on Zscaler analysis of the content in your organization. This completes the demonstration. Today, we discussed some of the benefits of using Zscaler DLP integration with Cohesity, how easy it is to get started with the integration, and lastly, how it can help organizations prevent the exfiltration of sensitive data across all channels of data loss, whether it's email, endpoint, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and web. Thank you for watching and have a great day.